Today we're going to talk about the cultural capital of Europe. Austria's second largest city is also named as the city of design and the European capital of culture. It is one of Europe's historically best preserved regions and is teeming with prestigious institutions and fascinating new attractions. Highlights include touring the city's numerous historic structures, especially the old town with its abundance of Baroque facades. Additionally, a small museum honoring the life and career of Hollywood legend Arnold Schwarzenegger is also located in the city. With its historic Renaissance-inspired city center, this city exudes beauty and elegance, and combined with its extensive list of things to do, makes for the ideal Austrian tourist destination. So without birthing any more curiosity, let's have a look at the top five things that you can do in Graz, the cultural capital of Europe. Number five, marvel at Graz Art Museum. Utter disbelief, enthusiasm, and amazement. Nobody is underwhelmed by the Graz Kampaus's magnificent architecture. It serves as a significant artistic foundation and a well-known landmark in the area. Locals frequently refer to it as the friendly alien because of its otherworldly appearance. A permanent collection of modern art shows are housed in its exhibition spaces, and occasionally other guest exhibitions of significance to the arts are held here as well. The building's design follows the odd blob architecture, or blobitecture, style of architecture. Based on organic forms, blobitecture expresses itself through distinctive structures that resemble protozoan organisms like amoebas. The gigantic organic building appears to have come from space and is enormous compared to Graz's traditional houses with Austrian aesthetics. The ominous perception is further heightened by the surroundings. The Kunsthaus not only has an amazing design, but it also has an amazing collection of modern art with exhibitions dating as far back as the 1960s. Even though it is not one of the most widely publicized museums of modern art in the world, the museum is regarded as one of Austria's most significant structures and undoubtedly one of those with the greatest architectural interest. Nighttime, when the structure is lit up like a spacecraft, offers the greatest view of the building. Number four, Murincell, a ship or an island? Is it an island or a ship? With this grandiose steelwork by U.S. American artist Vito Aconci, it is difficult to distinguish. The Murin cell was planned and built in honor of Graz's 2003 designation as the European capital of culture. The structure is 47 meters long and shaped like a massive seashell. It is connected to both sides of the Mur by two footbridges. An amphitheater is created in the middle of the platform. A cafe and a playground are located beneath a twisted spherical dome. When the bowl isn't being used as a theater, Akonsi said, it's a plaza, you sit face to face in everyday discussion. The entry canopy twists down to provide lounge seating around the dome where triangular tables are connected for parties of varying sizes of individuals. The rubber border of the terrace above twists down to create several bar counters. From the Murin cell, you can see a completely different side of the city of Graz as the River Mur whirls merrily by on both the left and right sides. The Murin cell is a striking sight during the day, but at night it truly glows. The artificial island appears even more alien thanks to the steel shell's extensive use of deep blue lights that come to life at night. The Murin cell is much more than just a method to cross a river. It is one of the most extraordinary bridges, or islands, in the entire globe. It stands alone as a science fiction location in the actual world. Number three, visit the Grand Graz Mausoleum. There aren't many that can compare to the grandeur and scope of Ferdinand II's mausoleum, which is reputed to be one of the most beautiful mausoleums of its sort in Europe. Between 1619 through 1637, Ferdinand was the Holy Roman Emperor and played a significant role in the disastrous Thirty Years' War. His mausoleum, which bears witness to his dominance, boasts opulent and magnificent architectural characteristics. Jesus statues, biblical images painted on canvas, portraits of Ferdinand as well as the parents of the emperor's sarcophagus all can be found inside the mausoleum. Amazing in design, the mausoleum is a fantastic location to visit for both religious and historical enthusiasts. Locals refer to it as the crown of the town because of its elevation and breathtaking vistas. The mausoleum's steps are the ideal location for a selfie. Number two, Eggenberg Palace. The enormity of the entire universe is confined in grass, and that certainly is true. The Eggenberg Palace on the outskirts of the city center is no joke. Rather, it is a beautiful illustration of harmonious architectural skill. The main palace, which is situated inside a lovely park, was designed as an architectural allegory of the universe. 
The structure stands in for a carefully designed universe. In response to the anarchy of the 16th century, Prince Hans Ulrich von Eckenberg commissioned it beginning in the year 1625 to represent his desire for a unified structure. The estate's architecture was entirely based on the Gregorian calendar and Enlightenment astronomy. You can see the close-set rows of windows that wrap around the facade by looking up at the walls of the welcoming castle. Every day of the year is represented by one of the 365 windows of Eggenberg Palace. You can explore the 24 opulent state chambers on the second floor, one for every hour a day. The 52 outside windows of the staterooms as a whole stand in for the 52 weeks of the year. The Planetary Room, one of Central Europe's most spectacular Baroque interiors, is the culmination of a loop of painted chambers. Eggenberg Palace features exactly 31 rooms on each floor, representing the total number of days in a month. Explore the first floor's Alte Galerie, which features a permanent exhibition of paintings by 17th century Dutch painters. Exotic surprises await you outside the palace. Lovely peacocks roam the grounds and flaunt their plumes to gawkers. If you keep an eye out, you might come across a lone rainbow feather in the grass that is looking back at you. Number one, explore Rath House and the main square. The Rath House, which is located in the heart of Graz's old town, has been the town hall for hundreds of years and has experienced various design changes from the Renaissance to the present day neoclassical structure. With comparable white columns and crenulations, an elaborate dome, and a stunning facade resembling the Budapest Parliament building, the impressive town hall is a sight to behold. The structure has a prominent position at one end of Graz's main square, which also has a sizable fountain honoring Archduke Johann, a significant figure in the history of Styria. Each building that encircles the square has its charm, while market booths line the bottom with vendors selling their products. The majority of the other structures that encircle the central area date from far earlier times, and many of them have colorful facades, elaborate stucco embellishments, and sculptures. The 15th century Lueg House, with its covered walkway and exquisite Baroque stucco work, is the most notable of them. The Adler Apotheki is housed in a structure from the 16th century, making it Graz's oldest pharmacy. The square was frequently used for public punishments, including executions, until the late 18th century. To amuse the innocent, offenders could be humiliated in front of the town hall. Executions were major occasions. The nobility was put to death in the town hall. The main square is the perfect starting point for a city tour. With its intriguing architecture, developing food scene, exciting nightlife, cutting edge design, lovely parks and gardens, and unique galleries and museums, this wonderful city has a lot to offer. Graz is a destination full of adventures that rewards an adventurous traveler. So, when are you planning to visit the cultural capital of Europe? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?